Now, uh, let's ask the question, what, how is the world reacting to this? What is Mr. Trump likely to do on the world stage? Well, for a view from Africa, I'm joined now in the studio by the international political analyst and executive director of Development Specs Academy, Professor K. K. Juku, who's a member of the editorial board of this day newspaper and is also a professor of strategic management and human capital development. Thank you very much indeed you, for Chris. joining us. Uh, what is your reaction to the news that Donald Trump is on his way back to the White House. Is it a nightmare or something you welcome? I welcome it heartily. At last, um, I think more and more Americans are being honest about how Americans feel, about what Americans want. <clears throat> yes, um, Obama came on as the first black man, converts certain values. If you recall, under Obama, Nigeria was to be sanctioned for making an anti-gay law. Nigeria was denied um, arms for all kinds of reasons. What I saw the Obama regime do, and which Biden tried to extend, was attempt to recreate the values of right and wrong for the rest of humanity. The amount of investment that government made on um, gender issue, I mean, uh, what do you call it now? LGBT. LGBT, it's never been done in history. The attempt to redefine gender, to redefine humanity, to push it all over the place. Then the pro-life and all other values of um, Trump, I noted that combat because it's been of interest to me for a long time. The moment Biden took over, you may recall that I wrote an article on the back of this day titled, As Biden Shows His, Shows His Hand. It was the same set of paradigms. And the issue for us is this. What is it that we've gained on that? So you find that Trump is abrasive, no mm. question about that. Some would say on box tours, you know, clearly a riot on his own. But in the end, what does he represent? He represents some of the things that the core conservative America has been interested in. After Reagan left office, his, his uh, chief of staff, Martin Blackwell, set up the Leadership Institute for only one reason, to recreate conservative, conservative American values and to ensure that those who pass through that institute, just like NIFTA in Nigeria, are gotten into the State Department and the core agencies. And part of the values being pushed there are what Trump, without any liaison with them, was doing. I was in that place in 2012. So the point being this. A government that could say, don't say Merry Christmas, is inclusive, it just says season's greetings, mm. must be a government that doesn't believe in God. And it's not about being conservative, being timid, being extremely religious. On what basis did that government set out to redefine what we are? So Trump came on, complete with what? Unappealing in uh, self-presentation and everything, but there was something that drove him on. Now, he was also abrasive, was not too welcoming to outsiders. Now, that Trump is the externalization of the feeling of the basic and average American. Namely, if you and I walk into the U.S. today, immigration doesn't feel happy seeing us. That's the truth. But they have to be nice about it. You mean it. seeing you, not me. Us. <laughs> <laughs> because. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, I understand, <laughs> you know. So the, the whole thing that everybody is trying to be politely mm -hmm. nasty, the man says, no, this is my backyard. I decide who comes here. So that element is there. Right. And I am not surprised at the victory because, you see, it means that more and more people have courage to be honest. Some people are seeing it as a progressive dismantling of America. I would say, what is there to be dismantled? A reality that everything was, everybody was pretending is not there is now being unveiled. Mm. And the custodian, or if you like, the, the patron saint of that is uh, Donald, um, Donald Trump. Right. Well, in any case, we're just hearing that um, both uh, President Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris have now called President Trump to congratulate him because she had uh, decided she wasn't going to speak today. And she probably still I understand she's going to speak at about 4 p.m. UK time. Mm, okay. uh, I mean, sorry, uh, 10 p.m. UK time, so I, I think, um, which, which would be yeah. sort of, you know, 4 p.m. American time. Yeah. Uh, but in any case, um, they've, they've called to congratulate him. But all the things you were saying, of course, reminds us of what a fractious election this has been, this has been mm -hmm. and points to the deep-seated divisions in America. Mr. Trump has talked about healing those divisions. Do you believe he can or he's going to deepen those divisions? He will deepen them. 
I, from experience, we've seen him as president. We've seen him as president who lost and didn't want to go. Mm. And we've seen him as president con 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 contesting, as a candidate contesting for this one and throwing everything while contesting. He's likely to deepen those divisions, not because he's setting out to deepen them, but because he will be so strong in affirming his own convictions that people, many will see that there's a gulf between him and them. Now, the question then will be the ultimate impact of those things he's doing. That's where our attention will be. Mm. But talking about healing, I think we are familiar with Trump's kind of healing. If he gives you medication that's not good for you and you don't take it, he says you're stupid. If you take it and it doesn't taste nice, you say, no, something is wrong with your taste buds. So that's the kind of healing we'll expect. But I would say about time too. And in terms of reducing the fractiousness of these elections, is there likely to be a sigh of relief in America that the victory seems so clear and is not blurred by being too close? Because, I mean, literally the day after, it's been called for Do Donald Trump. We've heard that Biden and you know, mm -hmm. Harris have congratulated him. Whereas in 2020, it took several days before a clear winner was Emerged, declared. Yes. Yeah. Now, this, this in itself is very revelatory of the American soul at this moment of the historical hour. The same um, Trump who lost, mm. the same Trump who was alleged to have actually wanted to probably take over violently, the same Trump who was indicted, the same Trump has received more votes than the vice president of an immediate past government of a different party. Yeah, but the vice president, who is a different individual, yes, only different. had three months to campaign. I mean, Donald Trump has had since 2020. Yes, but she's, not, she's also part of a party platform that had been in power and had projected a certain perception mm. of America and a certain set of core values. And so he comes on. The same person that was practically in Fredig, all of a sudden, he got real votes more than the other candidate. Mm. That suggests a new thinking. That suggests a slightly more honest America. That also suggests America we should become a little more worried about because he's going to be headed by a Trump who is a bulldozer, even though I like him. He's going to be headed by a Trump who is serviced by a parliament that he, his party dominates. Mm -hmm. So anything he sends across is like saying to his child, look, I don't want you to be on this seat. Move over. The boy will obey or the girl will obey. Now, that's a Trump. And that's a perfectly perfect um, recipe mm. for global danger. And, because, and, and, sorry, finish what you said. Because he's likely to get endorsement. Right. When it's only his acolytes are there, it's the party that owns it. He has shown a capacity for swallowing his party. He did that before. Nobody thought he would get the ticket that when he did it. The first time he became president, he got the ticket. People chuckled. Nobody thought he would win. He won. Mm. Misbehaved thoroughly after losing. He's come back. He's bounced back in a frightening way and with a lot of political and legal leverage. Um, so he's likely to be a little less manageable, quite right. frankly. And, and that's, that's, that's what worries people. And you use the term global danger. Yes. Um, mm. There is, of course, the war in Gaza. Um, he said that he wants that war to end quickly. But again, he gave no detail. So there was an absence of detail. But according to the Israelis, he called them to congratulate them on their operations in Lebanon. Can we therefore assume that if he were to bring that war to an end quickly, it would not end in a way that the Palestinians and the Arab countries want? It's easy to, it's easy to infer that. Um, we are looking at a man who, from our perception, has already taken sides. Mm. To that extent, the end of that war, knowing his usual temperament and disposition, will be, look, just deal with these guys. They are causing too much trouble here. We have other things to do. Sweep that, sweep that place out. <laughs> you know, that's, that's basically the kind of thing we are likely to see. And we must see beyond the question, of, it's not about Gaza and Israel. Mm. It's about the soul of America, which belongs to the Jews. If you take away Israeli scientists, Israeli businessmen, Israeli funding, Israeli management of the U.S. economy and the military and science, there will be no America. Mm. So people have always wondered, what is it that um, these people are always talking? Every small thing, 
America, you see them to be on the size of Israel. They help them have create an Israeli state. Those undercurrents are not lost on Trump. It was an Israeli. I remember he created a, 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 what you, a marketing chain of sale or return. He won't ask you to pay for anything. He'll come to your shop and drop it. He'll come back in a day or two or a week. If he's not on the shelf, you give him the money and was able to. The creative people, they constitute and compound the core of those values mm. and skills that enable the American state of today to be what it is. If you look at the number of Nobel laureates who have Israeli or Jewish heritage, the number of people with that heritage who are dominate different aspects of the American state's Silicon Valley, you will understand that if Trump, if he sees American interests as synonymous with the survival of the state of Israel, like he said, he'll just use insecticide on the place. Basically. And what about a country like Nigeria and, and the rest of Africa? Would Trump be good for the continent or would Harris have been better? Was Harris, what did Harris, Biden and Obama do for Nigeria or Africa? You said the man is from Kenya. I wouldn't argue about that. We have history, we have factual evidence to that effect. What did Obama's tenure do for Africa? What did the continuation of that tenure under Biden do for Africa? Well, Agoa was strengthened under Obama and, and, and there were quite a few um, Africa summits that were held in Washington. Thank you. Thank you. We've <laughs> walked into, two of us have walked ourselves into a, a, what I was looking forward to, summits on Africa, Agoa. What you call, um, there's a word for it, abstract gains. Oh, there's this summit on how to develop Africa. There's this summit on the needs of African states. There's an increase in aid mm. to support development, to fight corruption. By a country that if you and I, anybody moves in $5,000 into the U.S. banking system is flagged. They'll know where you are, where you're coming from. Billions of Naira are moving out of this country, converting to hundreds of millions of dollars into the U.S. economy and that of Europe. They know the owners. is driving the economy. That's not corruption. Is to come here and give us lectures and support anti-corruption agencies. So that fraud has lasted long enough. Let's not deal. That's why I say, what was it they delivered? Oh, summit on Africa, you know. If Africa leverages its massive human capital, it has a lot of arable land, it can feed the whole world. It's a speech in a hall. That swindle, I got familiar with it as a lecturer in the university. You listen to those who speak ideals. After that, you know that outside that hall, the fellow doesn't have a single follower, but he believes he has proposed a solution to everything on the planet and probably two other planets apart from this one. That game they've been playing with us has lasted long enough. We need somebody who will look and say, look, you guys, I think you're stupid, really. If you don't do this, you're not going to see me. That's the kind of thing Trump will tell Africa. And on that uh, very sobering note, I, I, I want to thank you very much indeed. It's always a pleasure to get to speak with you. Professor Oke Ikechuku is an international political analyst, the executive director of Development Specs Academy, a member of the editorial board of this day newspaper, and a professor of strategic management and human capital development. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Charles. That's it for this edition of Arise Prime Time. Join us again tomorrow from me and the entire team here in Abuja and Washington. Bye-bye and thank you for watching.